There are two techniques that we can use uh, in order to draw a network diagram. The first one is activity on node technique. That means our activity would be represented by the node. The second one is activity on arrow technique. It simply means that our arrow would be representing the activity. So we have a node in the form of circle while the second one is our arrow. So activity on node technique the activity is actually represented by this node that means this node would be the start and end of the activity while activity on arrow means that the tail would be the start of the activity while the arrow would be representing the end of that certain activity now for example if we are talking about activity on node technique that means that suppose we are having an activity a and then activity b so the node would be representing the activity while the arrow would just be representing the precedence which means it would be representing that B will only start when the activity A has been completed so it represents the precedence that what activity is following the activity A and while the node represents the start and end of the activity so where the arrow is attached, we can say that activity has been started and the tail of the arrow would represent that activity has been completed if there is certain another activity C. So this is the simple activity on node technique. Now if we talk about the activity on arrow technique, that means our activity would be represented by the arrow. For example, we would start from one node and the arrow would be representing the activity A and then we would end at another node so the node in this case would be representing just a small event which will be not consuming any time or resources it will be just a small moment or event so this event would either represent the start of an activity or end of activity and in this case the arrow <coughs> the arrow would be representing the end of activity A while the tail of this arrow would be representing the start of activity A so our node in this case are just representing the events where the activity has been completed or the activity has been started like in this case this, the tail of this arrow would be representing that this node or would be the event where the activity B has been started and activity A has been ended so it is just a simple technique where you can show the activity by arrow but in this case you can show the activity you have to show the activity by the node uh, in this case the arrow represent the precedence that which activity is being followed by what activity now let's compare some of the activities uh, that how we represent it uh, in activities on node and then how would be it in activity when represented by the activity on arrow technique so for the starting with the simple one if there is an activity a then it will be activity b and then activity c so it is just a simple one we have the arrows are just representing the precedence while the activity is actually represented by our nodes. So the arrow will not be taking any resources or time, it will be just the event and uh, telling us that the, uh, the, it still would be telling us that the activity B has been ended here and the arrow would be um, representing that the activity has, uh, C has been started. Well, if we represent the same uh, activity on arrow technique, then we would start from a node and then we would be representing an activity A by the arrow and then it will be the end of activity A, then we would be starting by activity B, then end of the activity B and then the starting the activity E, C and its ending. So there is not much difference uh, as it is the most simplest part, but there are some complications when we go to the more complex uh, precedences and if there are two arrows leaving one node or something like that so let's let's move to that if uh, we have a case uh, like this
So in this case, as you can see that the C is preceded by both A and B, while D is preceded uh, just by B. If you want to represent uh, the same the same network in the activity on L technique, then there will be a little bit complication, and uh, we need to add something uh, which we, we would call the dummy dummy activity. And let's go through that. So we are starting with the node and then we are adding activity A and then activity A has been an ended over here and same we are doing with the B because B is not preceded by anyone so we will start it with the node and then it would be our activity B and then ending activity B at another node now as you can see that we have completed these two activities but up till here and here now our D is preceded just by B so we can at this node our activity B has been completed so we can add directly the activity D and then ending it but as far as the C is concerned so it is preceded by A as well as it is preceded by B so we can write right here the activity C but the problem would be that it is also preceded by B. So if we merge these two nodes and take the C and D out of the, that single node, then the problem would be that D is only preceded by B, D is not preceded by A. So for that, we let's end this activity C. So for that, in order to show that C is preceded by activity A as well as it is preceded by activity B as in this case, the C will only be able to start once the activity A and B has already been completed. So we have to show that. So th this is only showing that activity C only depends on A. But in order to show that it also depends on B, we have to draw a dummy activity which is represented by uh, dotted lines and this is called our dummy activity uh, this dummy activity do not consume any resources or time and it is just drawn to clarify our relationship of the network diagram so that now it can show that our C depends on a activity A as well as it depends on activity B and this dummy activity we just added it for clarification. Let's go through one more example where we need to uh, add a dummy example, uh, an add the dummy activity. So let's say it is activity A and B, and A is also preceding the C. And B and C are preceding the activity D. So it is uh, simple in activity on node, but when we represent it in the activity on arrow, then we have to start it from one node to another node, and it will be our activity A. So we have an activity A, and then it is preceding activity B as well as activity C. So there is an activity as well as it is preceding our activity C right and then ending both the activities with the nodes now B or D activity D is preceded by B as well as by C so we have to find a node which will be the end of activity B as well as activity C which is not possible in this case so let's draw an activity D from B and end it with the node now in this case again the D also depends on the C because it is preceded by C so for that we again show like, let's try it in this way so it is activity C and end it over here for that, in order to show that D also is preceded by C, we again draw a dummy activity over here. That would represent that 
D is also preceded by C and this will be our dummy activity which will not be consuming any time or resources but it will be clarifying us that uh, this network shows that the D is, activity D is also preceded by activity C along with the B. Let's uh, look at the example and try to draw uh, its network diagram in activities, uh, activity and node technique. So we have activities from A to H and uh, we have a certain precedence uh, as described. So A is not uh, preceded by anyone, B is not preceded by anyone. So on activities on node technique, we would start an activity A and activity B as they are not preceded by anyone. Uh, if you look, uh, our activity C is preceded by activity A, and D is also preceded by A. Okay, so let's say um, let's take an activity C, D is preceded by A, and then our D is also preceded by A. So D is preceded by B as well. So let's take. Take it from A and B, and so it will be our activity D as it is preceded by A and B. Activity C, uh, activity E depends on our activity C. So let's take it here and take the activity E because it, it is preceded by C. Uh, the F is also preceded by C. So let's take another activity F and it is also preceded by C now our G is preceded by D and E so our D and E is all the precedence activities for our activity G so we will take an activity G and it is preceded by E and D our final activity H is preceded by F and G. So our final activity H is preceded by F and G. So it is a simple technique uh, that is called the activity on node technique because each activity is placed on a certain node while the arrow represents the precedence that what activity is uh, it is it following or what are the activities followed by this activity so it was a simple activity on node technique now if we want to talk about the activity on arrow technique for the same example let's see how how would that be so we would definitely start uh, from a single node let's call it the start starter node and then we have activity A and B as they are not preceded by anyone so we will take it from the start node activity A and activity B and then ending it ending them by another nodes okay now we have activity C that is preceded by activity A so once activity A has been completed then we would be able to start activity C here will be our activity C because it is just preceded by this single activity which is A. Our activity D is preceded by A as well as B. Now if you want to take the activity D, so we need to we the activity A and B both need to be completed in order to start our activity D. So let's take it from here. Let's say this is our activity D, but it is just preceded by activity B. Now, in order to show that it is also preceded by our activity A, for that again we need the dummy activity so that it can be represented that it is represented. It is preceded by activity B and as well as it is preceded by activity A. So the dummy activity would be the dotted line right here which will not be taking any time or resources but it will be showing that our activity D is preceded by A and D both.
Now on fun, uh, next uh, activity is activity E which is preceded by C. So our C is, is after C has been completed, we will take another activity E and then end it because E only depends on C. And same is case with the F, it also only depends on it also depends on C. So so far we have completed a bit F. Now let me talk about the activity G. Let's end the activity G over here. So when we talk about activity G, so it depends on D and E. So the precedence are D and E. So the D is right completed right over here, and the E is completed over here. For G, we need both of them to be completed. So we can merge these activities as there are not any other activities depending on D and E. So we can merge these two nodes. And merging, what we mean is to get a single node from where we can take the G activity out of it. So by merging it is like this. We will take a single node for both of them. This was our activity D. And this is our activity E and both are ending at this node right and then ending at this node finally we would take the activity G out of it and then end it now we can say that we can say that it, the G is dependent on D and E both final activity is activity H which depends on activity F and activity G. Now we cannot take both two arrows out of here to show just a single activity. For that again we can merge both of these nodes to a single node and then we will take H out of it. By that we can we mean that we can do it in this way. We just need to merge them into a single activity or oh, sorry into a single node so this will be our activity F this was our activity D G and H depends on F and G so we would take our final activity H out of it and then end it so this is our activity on arrow technique this was an, our activity on node technique I think um, if you still have any question, I think I will try to explain it very well. But if you still have any questions, please do comment. Uh, I'll try to answer them. Thank you very much. Good luck. Goodbye.